I don't know when to say my intro. How long to wait before I press record? I don't know. It's weird with OBS. But anyway, we are on kick. We are live right now, but by the time you see this, we probably won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If you missed the live and you want to see if there's any highlights from the live or any, uh, you know what I'm saying, substantial life-changing quotes that I had, it'll be on here, this channel. <laughs> Don't forget, we do got the Patreon. We're starting a new show tomorrow, Sherlock. Well, I'm starting it tonight. Y'all be able to watch along tomorrow. Um, and we also got the Discord as well. Discord plays a big role nowadays. Um, yeah. The Discord. <laughs> Anywho. All of the links to this is down below in the link tree. I don't know if y'all are familiar with link tree. It's somewhere you can put all your... All your socials and anything else you want people to know all in one spot so in the description click that link tree everything will pop up oh man I, on tiktok i got fifty two thousand people now 52 we almost caught youtube in in three months so if you're watching and you're not follow subscribe <laughs> youtube versus youtube versus tiktok the lit one <laughs> that's crazy Anyway, 10 things that only exist in the UK. I'll be the judge of that. This is where it all began. Greg's first shop opened in Gosforth in Newcastle 68 years ago. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we'll be looking at 10 things that only exist in the UK. Oh, we get smashed. Oh, the oh, really? oh, oh, really? Before we begin, we publish new all right. about our little more that you can only find. Party 7. You'll have to be a certain age to remember Party 7, since, in its original form, it disappeared back in the 1980s. Tenor says he did it. I've, I, I'm not playing. Tenor and a Party 7. This was a tin of beer that was the equivalent of seven pints in one big can, which would have cost about a tenner in- Yo. Seven? This was real? Today's money, though it originally cost 15 shillings. <laughs> People was buying these, and they was probably inebriated, gone. And I believe, since it's in the UK, I believe y'all both y'all drank two per person, probably. Party seven is crazy. It's a testament to how much the Brits love booze that such a product existed and remained popular despite its propensity to explode and supposed poor quality. Right, the chosen vintage of the CID. Then, in the 2020s, Party 7 had a brief renaissance when the beer returned in a keg format in 2021. Little Chef It was a sad time in 2018 when the final Little Chefs closed their doors. It's a little chef. Well, like yeah. Once upon a time, every long car journey could be livened up by a trip to a Little Chef, which lined motorways up and down the country. You could, so Little Chefs is like a restaurant? I hate when they close down classic restaurants. Like, come on, man. Keep one alive. Go in there and get classic food, like a full English breakfast for a steal. A boon not only to families giving their classic food, like a full English breakfast for a steal. The hell is... What is this? Why do they say full avocado? I mean, full avocado. Why do they say full English breakfast then show this? A boon not only to families giving their kids a chance to stretch their legs, but lorry drivers needing a pick-me-up after hours on the road. It struggled for years following its decline in the 2000s and eventually shut all its branches. But for decades, it was a British cultural icon. A little chef goes a long way. The House of Lords. The most headline-grabbing recommendation, abolishing this place, the House of Lords, in favour of an elected chamber. One of the most controversial things in British politics, the House of Lords, as of 2023, is still there and still affecting our laws. That's despite many Bastard. attempts to reform it and lots of high-profile and powerful politicians even saying they want to abolish it completely. I think there's a lot that needs to be done to change the House of Lords. What I'm the House of Lords, that sounds crazy. 
not convinced about is that we need another elected chamber. It's one of the most bizarre parts of life in the UK. That we still House have this Lords. system of hereditary aristocratic titles that mean unelected people, often rich landowners, get to sit there in Parliament and tweak or even outright block laws devised in the House of Commons. What people get very worried about is the size. So people sit in there that have no, they probably have a political, you know, they probably choose a party or whatever they, whatever is going on out there. But they are not actually elected officials. They're basically in there for their own benefits, not really caring about the people. That's a little crazy to me. Eyes of the House of Lords and the appointments process for the House of Lords. They've got no real public... They're just sitting there like, huh, I'm going to make my own rules. These peasants, I don't care. Like, what's going on? Accountability, and are one of the strangest things about Britain to explain to foreigners. Cornish pasties. Cornwall is a unique part of England with its own distinct culture. Cornish pasties. On TikTok, they be trying to get me to do to when I go live. They always say Cornish. Have I tried a Cornish? I call it a pasties, but they they get on me for saying pasties. It's pasties. Okay. Flag and even a native language. And it, it looked like an empanada. Go Google empanada and don't tell me they don't look the same. Also boasts one of the most iconic British foodstuffs, the Cornish pasty. But the humble Cornish pasty is perhaps more important than you realise if you're not from Cornwall yourself, since it previously held protected status under EU law. This meant that only pasties meeting stringent requirements could truly call themselves Cornish. They've got to follow <laughs> a strict recipe and be prepared in Cornwall. This was all done to protect the pasty industry, which uses local produce and provides I'm part Jamaican, of course I've heard that. It's jobs to many in the county. Tabloids. Of course, most countries do have tabloids. Yeah, we have tabloids. Of their own, but tabloid culture in Britain is a law unto itself. Around the world, the UK is notorious for its relentless, unethical tabloids. Not only do British celebs find themselves at the mercy of the tabloid presses regularly. Nah, this is not just not a British thing. No, nah, we have tabloids that are exactly the same as this. But so do celebrities from elsewhere who are deemed worthy enough to get harassed by UK red tops. I was in the sun, but I, I can't celebrate it because I'm an honorary scouser, so eh. For over a hundred years mm -hmm. now, I was in the Daily Mail too. Now we can celebrate that one. <laughs> cheaply produced papers relying on sensationalist reporting and invading the privacy. Oh, I was in the Times too. If the rich and famous. Oh, I was in the Mirror too. Have been part and parcel Tough. of British life. So much so. Was I in the Guardian? I, I don't know about the Guardian. That it's strange to imagine that the media landscape is very different overseas. Colin the Caterpillar. It's quickly becoming the food fight of the century because. The iconic birthday staple, Colin the Caterpillar, is going to war with lookalike Cuthbert. No child's birthday party. Never heard of it. He is complete without a visit from Colin. Honestly looks a little bit creepy, no offense. <laughs> the Caterpillar. Caterpillar cakes are sold by every major supermarket, all boasting different names. As a cake? Though the original Colin version was introduced by M&S in the 1990s. Marks and Spencers are taking Aldi to court over the budget-friendly version of the cake. Kate claiming that Cuthbert is not only an imposter, but riding on the coattails <laughs> of the supermarket's reputation. Imagine going to court and suing about a caterpillar cake. I mean, I get it. It's money. So, yeah, do it, but that's tough. Marks and Spencers is so protective of its Colin name, in fact, that it tried to take Aldi to court for infringing on its intellectual property by Did they win? Cuthbert the caterpillar. You know, it's a bit unfair because you've got similar caterpillars. I think there's a Clyde in Asda, and there's a, a Wiggle in Sainsbury's, and an Eric. That was on the news? Like, imagine tuning in with no context to the news, and you hear this. Like, that's an American. Of course, it would, like, like it wouldn't happen. But, like, just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that suit was settled, and Caterpillar cakes continue to be sold by all supermarkets, often as a cost-effective way to get a large amount of chocolate cake for your kids. So they lost. Greg's. If you miss Little Chef, Greg's is one of the retailers that expanded to fill the vacuum it left behind. This is where it all began. Everybody asks me if I've tried Greg's too. I'm like, what is Greg's? Y'all make it sound like that's something that I can go purchase. 
Greg's is an actual store. Okay, now I get it. And Greg's first shop opened in Gosforth in Newcastle 68 years ago. But not only will you find a Greg's at every service station up and down the country, there's pretty much a Greg's on every single street, sometimes two or even three branches all competing with each other. With its cheap, tasty pastries and sandwiches, Greg's has invaded high streets around the country from its headquarters in Newcastle, which has over 30 branches alone. From its roots in the northeast, Greg's expanded steadily. In total, there were over 2,200 branches of Greg's, about 1,000 more branches than McDonald's, but it still only Damn. exists in the UK. It didn't even have any shops in Northern Ireland until 2016. Today, Greg's has more shops in Britain than either McDonald's or Starbucks and says it may launch abroad in the years to come. Tizer. Hey, listen, can I build? So Greg's is like a must stop. I've got to stop there. This might be real. Might be a real commercial. Shopify. It's, not, it's a red thing. Though its presence on supermarket shelves has waxed and waned, especially in recent years, Tizer is still sold by British retailers and turns 100 Gosh. in 2024. Never heard of it's this. Manufactured one. by Bar, which also makes Iron Brew. But unlike mm. the national drink of Scotland, Tizer has never really appeared in other countries. Iron Brew's it fire. It's such a niche drink that you might have thought it had been made defunct and could have gone years without seeing a bottle. Yes, we have three great new flavors. No, we're not changing color. Tizer, it's a red thing. Bright red and with a top secret recipe. Who knows what they really put in Tizer, which adds to the allure of the great British pop, as even good. slogan calls it. Henry Hoover. What British home is complete without a humble Henry to keep everything shipshape? Meet Henry from Pneumatic International. Henry and his numerous siblings like James and Hetty are certainly the most- I feel like Henry Hoover is very, very like, like I remember this. Most iconic vacuum cleaner in the UK, thanks to his large googly eyes and cute appearance. Though not the best vacuums on the market, then why buy it? Be damned if they're not reliable. So, what is it that makes Henry the industry favourite? Is it the long life engineering and proven reliability? There aren't any bells and whistles on Henry, though some are designed for slightly different things. Buying him, you can be sure. Nah, we definitely don't have him, but I think I might have seen him before. You've got a solid appliance that might even last a lifetime, but all without breaking the bank. It's all over the floor. Seems to work perfectly fine. Well. Beat up again, please. Any of this go in your mouth? Mr. Blobby. Maybe the most bizarre thing to come out of British light entertainment, and that's saying something. Mr. Blobby has been a household name ever since his debut in the late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what? But his longevity defies all logic and reason. An absurd character who caused chaos on Noel's house party, Mr. Blobby now routinely reappears on TV and even on the stage. Because Mr. Blobby will be going on holiday soon, he needs to get a photograph for his passport. Even Blobby needs identity. Why does he talk like that? <laughs> what is this? Is traumatizing. Every time he does, he wreaks havoc, ruining segments, breaking items, throwing tantrums, and scaring children half to death. Oh, he smashed oh, really? oh, 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 oh. Why do they keep bringing him back when his only role is to smash things and screech like a banshee? It's when you have nothing planned on your episode of TV, you just call Mr. Blobby. Your guess is as good as ours. Do you agree with them? Okay. All right. It's a weird one. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.